Hello and welcome to this video on the creeping bureaucracy that keeps academic writing standards. This is an organisation that came out of the reproducibility crisis, a mantra of publish or die, and issues with an ever-increasing occurrence of fraud. It is a 20-year-old project. Since the late 90s, the rate of retractions has grown. It has not been exponential, but a definite increase. This requires some sort of action to limit it. We previously mentioned COPE, or the Committee on Publication Ethics, as part of good publishing practices, but did not explain who or what they were. This problem in misconduct and integrity is why COPE exists. It was established in 1997 by a small group of medical experts. They agreed on a series of good publication practices, and the group has evolved since. COPE tries to educate and guide publishing in a way that produces ethical publications. That is, those that are reproducible, are reliable, and have the information required. This is done by influencing the culture around publishing. As has been said in past videos, academia is rather cutthroat when it comes to publishing. First, the publish is a lot more important than second, and positive results are most important of all. This owes to the biases in publishing criteria, editors' preferences to include results that show something useful and more. This often leads to errors in judgement and false reporting, both by lead researchers and by overzealous authors who might embellish what they are claiming. The way COPE has developed its guidelines is not to conduct investigations of these issues themselves. They also do not necessarily encourage the editors of a journal to investigate misconduct allegations. Instead, it gets thrown back to the institute where the research happened. This would seem a lot like passing responsibilities onto the institute rather than dealing with it themselves. However, COPE is not doing that. They do not just set this high standard, but provide tools for those interested, unlike other social movements. This covers all of the important topics, like misconduct, authorship, conflicts of interest, and the issuing of corrections. This could be a simple manual or a flowchart to suit different situations and access requirements. It means institutes know not only what they are looking for, but what they're expecting to be putting into these journals in the first place. It ensures that there is an understanding between publication outlets and where research is done on what both has to be submitted with the article itself and what should be available if there are questions raised. That in and of itself isn't enough to change the whole environment around publishing. There are also regular forums held where difficult cases can be aired and discussed. This allows for tool and skill building. It ensures editors know how to handle cases that they may not be familiar with, how to address problems, and how to better deal with the human and scientific elements of publishing. Not all authors are willing to accept that their work may be flawed, and not all research can be handled in the same way. Balancing the soft and hard skills is a delicate task and requires a deft hand that you may not begin as an editor with. The effects of this are not yet telling at the level of retractions and similar, but the tools and guides COPE makes available are helping to promote a system of effective publishing that follows ethical guidelines, like those we discussed in a companion video to this. Publishing needs to be more strictly and effectively observed. Although some academics do go out of their way to try and maintain a high level of quality, 
the culture around this at the moment does not allow for that to happen easily or effectively, and that may need to change if we are to continue trying to keep the academic record clean of spurious or misrepresented results. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.